Hey guys, we're gonna have a fun photo shoot today. We've got this really awesome location and we've got Tay Lindsay, an actor who came all the way up from Miami, Florida, up here to North Carolina, just to have some fun with us today for this photo shoot. Be on the lookout for him, man. He's got some big things coming. He's booked 21 gigs already this year, so this is the man. So we're happy to have him here. All right, let's get going on this photo shoot. All right, guys, we're gonna use four lights today. The first is this key light here. We've got a one by three foot strip box. We've got some diffusion in there. And then we've also got a, a grid so the light doesn't spill too far on e either side or front or back of him. That's really gonna control that light. All right, second light is our edge light for the talent. Now on this one, we didn't do any diffusion. We just got this seven inch parabolic reflector. But in that, we've got a 20 degree grid. So what that's gonna do is the same thing as the grid on the other one, where it doesn't allow the light to go any further than 20 degrees out as it shoots that pattern. All right, the third light we got is this light lighting up that motor in the background. That's a nice architectural highlight and we want that to show up in this shot. So we gotta put some light on it. Otherwise, the way we've lit everything else, it's gonna end up dark. All right, the way we did that is we used this snoot, uh, which really channels the light even more than any of the grids that we've talked about already. Uh, this will channel the light so we can be far away from it, but still get sort of a spotlight on the motor back here. The fourth light we've got is a backlight for the motor we just talked about. So we want to get a little bit more edge light and backlight on that motor. So we're using this guy. Again, we're kind of far away from it. So we put in a 10 degree grid, which is going to make that an even tighter pattern as it shoots out and goes toward that motor that's about uh, 20 feet away. All right, in addition to all the lights, we're gonna use a reflector here. I like to use gold for a shot like this to get a little bit of a warmer tone reflected. It's not reflecting much light, but it's just grabbing some when the flashes pop to help fill in kind of the lower portions of the photo. And last but not least, we've got the Antari Mobile Fog Machine. This thing is fantastic. It's battery powered. It has plenty of juice to go for most photo shoots. You can bring it in and you can create ambiance in a room where you don't have any power on location. It's really fantastic. All right, so we got our lighting all set up. We're gonna fog it up behind him here, get a little ambiance going on, catching some light, and uh, let's go ahead and get a shot, see what it looks like. Yeah, there we go, guys, there we go. You take a look at this shot, you can see we got the motor lit up nicely, you can see we've got the edge light, uh, spilling nicely onto the side of Tay there. We've got the top light coming down, creating that moody effect that we want. We got just a little bit of ambiance from the fog. All right, guys, we got a great shot today. We'll take that into Photoshop here in a minute and take a look at it. Tay, appreciate you coming up today, man. Thanks for having me. Yep, got some great work there, man, great work. All right, guys, you saw what we did today. You can do this too. Go out there, keep trying, keep practicing, keep creating, find cool people like Tay that'll come and help you out. And before you know it, you'll be doing stuff like this. All right, guys, so we got our photo into Photoshop here. Um, when I look at a photo like this, I love it already, um, but I always think of what kind of things can I do to enhance this? So right now, the way I shoot with my camera, it has a bit of a flat profile. So I'm gonna go in and I am going to adjust the saturation on this a little bit to give it a little more pop. Um, and I'm gonna do that by hitting Command U on my keyboard. And that brings up the hue and saturation dialog box here. So um, what I can do is just bump that saturation up a bit. You see the warm tones coming in. That gives it kind of a cool look, right? All right, so to me, that's enough on that. I would like to potentially give this a bit of an orange and teal feel. It's a very theatrical, cinematic looking shot. Um, so what we'll do there is go to our color balance window and I do that by hitting command B on my keyboard and we'll bring that in here and take a look um, you can see here you can do your shadows your midtones and your highlights so let's go to our shadows and let's pull some of this teal color into that shadow a little bit maybe even push some blue in there I have blues darkening up a little bit too much let's teal those up let's just see as we pull what that does there we go there we go Right, so we're getting we're getting much more of a cinematic look. Now, a lot of times, a color combination used on on uh, especially on an action movie or something that feels like this would be an orange and teal. So the teal is usually in the 
shadows and the orange is usually in the highlights. So we're gonna pop a little more red in there and a little more yellow in there to orange that up just a little bit, right? So now we got that kind of orange and teal feel. Now I would say another thing I'd like to do now that I've done that, um, I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna leave that. We're starting to get a good look here. The other thing that I'd probably do with this, now that I've, that I've adjusted that uh, orange and teal, is go back in and adjust those oranges the way I like them. So we're gonna go back to our hue and saturation dialog box, which is command U. By the way, you can also find these under the image menu and then there'll be adjustments uh, and all of these things that I'm going into uh, will be contained in that menu. All right. so. You don't have to adjust the saturation of everything, right? You can go in and say, well, I just want to adjust the red saturation. So you select reds from here. And if you start popping those reds, eh, it might be going a little bit too pink. All right, let's pop the yellows a little bit. Okay, we're getting some more saturation in them. But I want the hue, there we go. I want the hue of that yellow to change. I don't want it to be so yellow. I want it to be more reddish orange, right? So as I pull this, now you can go crazy with this, right? Oh man. You know, you can get artistic and create all kinds of looks, right? But if you don't want to go too far off center, you can pull it and just to get those to red up just a little bit. And then you can go into your reds and you can mess with them the same way, right? Does that go too pink? Did I get it to just right? So I went a little bit the other direction on that. And I think I've got what looks like a pretty cool and interesting shot here. Now, the other thing, so I'm gonna click okay. The other thing that I see going on is that in his face, it's, his face is a little bit lost in this, right? It was obviously underexposed in that. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my filter and I'm gonna go to my camera raw filter. And this, I'm gonna have to make that smaller for you guys. This is gonna pull up all the controls you had in camera raw. All right, so when I brought this in, I did a little bit of adjusting in camera raw, not a lot. Um, so I just always take you straight to the JPEG. But now that we're in this camera raw utility, what I want to do is adjust just the area around his face, right? We can't bring it up too much because you start bringing stuff that's really dark up too much and then you're gonna lose, uh, you're, you're gonna get graininess, you're gonna get some things that, that you don't like. So, but we'll use this tool here, right? So we can, we can do some uh, adjustment brush work. All right, so your brush, you can kind of set um, down here, you can set the size of this brush and how much feathering. What I'd like to do is feather it. So as we, we're going to, we're going to paint over his face. Um, I want it just a little bit bigger and I want that feather bigger, right? So this, so what we do doesn't have such a hard edge to it. Now I've, my settings, I've already messed with some settings here. I'm going to pull them back closer to center. Um, and we'll just do a quick paint right here. All right. So we're going to paint in this general area. Right. Okay, so we know we've got that area painted over. Let's adjust the shadows. If we pull the shadows up, there you are, Tay. Look at you hiding in there. All right, so we've pulled those up. We get a little bit more. Um, we may want to say, ah, you know, his face is because of the way we saturated it is so saturated that I want to pull some of that back, right? Maybe I want to pull the whites up so those highlights pop a little more, right? If you really jam it up, it's maybe too much, right? But you do that. Okay, the whites pull the highlights up a little bit. We can pull the entire exposure up a little bit, right? So now you got a little more of his face in there. I'm adjusting them, you know, whether it's a little warmer, a little cooler. Um, you got all kinds of things. You can go in here and play, guys, and I encourage you to do that. Take, shoot raw files, open them up in camera raw, and just go to town. You can create some crazy artistic, cool looking stuff. But for now, we're trying to get a photo that has a realistic look, but has more of a cinematic and, and a cool look to it. So I think we've done a lot there. Now, as I click OK, you're going to see it blip real quick and change. And you probably hardly saw that. Um, we zoom in here, you can see we've got a little more of his face. Now, if you zoom way in, you can see we're getting some grain, right? So what we probably need to do is go back into the camera raw filter. Don't hit this right here. All that does is reapply what you already did and enhances it even more. So we're going into our camera raw filter, right? And we've got, we've got this area right here. What we can do in general for the whole thing is just apply some noise reduction. Boom. All right, let's zoom in and see if that helped. All right, so we take it out, 
Yes. Right? That just took enough off for it to not be too crazy. But of course, a shot like this has such an edgy look that uh, I think we're in good shape. You can adjust your detail here to get some of it back. Right? And you're not really hurting the rest of the shot by doing this. You're just giving a little bit of that uh, uh, filtering here to make his face not look so, um, uh, so pixelated in that shot. Now we click OK. Now remember also, I'm zooming way in. That's way above 100%. So what we've got here, I think, in general, and I'm going to hit Command minus to pull back so I can see my entire image, right? You hit Command plus, it zooms you in. Command zero takes it back down to where it fits. So you've got all these key commands so you can work quicker in Photoshop. I think we've created a really cool and interesting looking image. Um, the only other thing I might do is go in and check the levels on it because it does feel a little dark. You can see here that on the histogram that it is pushed way down. I don't mind these darks just falling completely off. But I think we need to brighten it up just a little bit on this image. And now I think we've got something pretty interesting. You may not like that orange and teal. You may think it's too much. Um, but uh, again, that is the beauty of using Photoshop. That's the beauty of creating art with photography. Um, if you said, hey, that's too much saturation. Well, all right, I just hit Command U, open my hue saturation, pulled it back a little. Yeah, you might like that better, right? I hit Command B, bring this back up and decide, you know, my shadows were way, I, I need to warm them back up, right? You see that changing? That was way too much. So now that feels a little bit better, right? All right, so we got a very moody, cool, high contrast, interesting looking shot here, guys. Um, I hope this helps you. Uh, if you guys have other comments, other things I could do with this, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, other ideas, love to hear from other people. Creativity doesn't just come from one person, it comes from everyone.